Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. We're also having a dance party right now in the background. You can hear Go West by the Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> this weekend in Canada, we celebrate Family Day. Monday is a federal holiday. So I'll share some family happenings in our family. When I pick up our kids and I bring them home after daycare, we drive by this aquarium amusement park. And our older son, Vyasa, whenever we drive by, he sees the parking lot is empty and it's so cold. So he'll say, Hanumanji, please help these animals find their way home back to the forest. <laughs> and recently he had asked me, Pitashi, what's your favorite color? And I said, I don't have one, but he insisted. So I said, yellow. And then he said, pink is my favorite color, but it's going to change. And I was concerned that because he's a boy, he's not allowed to like pink. And I said, why? He said, well, when I grow up, everything will change. <laughs> Shuka. His happenings are less insightful, more humorous. He saw a stink bug in our home, and they're a lovely brown color. So he takes out his pencil crayons and says, I'm going to make that stink bug colorful. <laughs> and one more humorous happening. He had just used the toilet, and he was so excited to play that he left his underwear down, but tried to pull his pants up. And it wasn't working. So he started crying and saying, Pitashi, my pants aren't working anymore. <laughs> you all have your own families. But through Meaningful Mornings, I want you to feel that your family is now this community. And not to stop there, to feel your family is society. Your family has the same nama as you. Your community has the same rupa as you. We're learning to go beyond nama and rupa. That's where we feel a oneness with society. In our last verse, Sri Krishna says, be rejoicing. How do we practice that? By knowing escaping pain is not equivalent to embracing peace. They're different. They're different dimensions. He shared, be joyous. How do we practice that? Not to externalize. If you're joyous because of an external factor, that is not being joyous then. If you're joyous because your mind is quieter, that is being joyous. And the evolution of that? Be joy. This is where one is not living for sukha prapti. The prapti is complete. One is only living Sukha, be joy. 
This last verse was sharing with us, when we complete our journey to joy, there will only be joy. The same was taught at the end of chapter two. The signs of the wise, they are content. I added a couple of more reflective points for us. When we dream, there is a unique triputi. In English, I am the dreamer, I am dreaming, and I'm experiencing the dreamed. Correct? I am all three factors. What Sri Krishna is sharing in this last verse. The subject is the self. The verb is the self. The object is the self. To emphasize, there is only oneness. Any sense of difference, that is maya, that is an illusion. In verse 15, Sri Krishna used the word agnyanena, which means one has forgotten the nature of peace. And in the last series of verses, he is sharing insights into those who have remembered the nature of peace. In verses 16 and 17, he describes peace as tat. If you go back, you'll see these words. 18 and 19, sama. 20 and 21, Brahma. 22, Buddha. Now 23 and 24, Sukha. These are all synonyms. Why is so much attention is being given towards these synonyms? For those who are living this, these are Lakshanas. These are signs that they're living, infinity, etc. For us, these are to be sadhanas. For those at the ends, these are signs they're at the end. For us, these are our means. We are to practice how those who are joyous live. Bhagavad Gita is most practical in this sense. Same notion continues in verse 25. Labhante Brahma Nirvanam Rishayakshina Kalmashaha Chinna Dvaidhaya Tatmanaha Sarva Bhuta Hiterataha an awesome verse, especially the last quarter. First quarter, Labande, the one who gains or is now experiencing Brahma Nirvana. Nirvana means to blow out into Brahma. The ego is now one with the spirit. Another word for Brahma Nirvana. You would have seen this in your commentary. It is moksha. A mumukshu is a seeker. The seeker lives by mumukshutwa, which means they're living for moksha. When a mumukshu completes mumukshutwa, there is moksha. English words for moksha are freedom. Freedom is when one is independent. When one is independent, they are joy. Are you all understanding and appreciating? Sri Krishna's message is the same, but he's approaching this from different perspectives, not for Prince Arjuna. 
he knows the psychology of Prince Arjuna. <clears throat> so why so many perspectives? For us. Look at the diversity of just this community. Rishayaha. Rishis. China Kalmashaha. China have been destroyed, dismantled. Kalmashaha, their impurities or their vasanas. The implication? A rishi is a seer. They can see what ordinary people cannot. This seeing is felt as understanding. They understand that desires will not lead to completion. They understand that desires are so volatile. Why do you have a certain type of desire? How come it comes on as an avalanche, as a tsunami? The reason for that. Those desires are sourced from our print, our propensity, our vasana. A rishi is one who understands they are not the V in the BMI chart. They are the O. That's why they can withstand Kama and Kroda. It's not suppression. It is understanding. Chinna dvaidha yatatmanaha. Such a presence knows who they are. They are the atma. Atma is infinite, atma is joyous. So chinna. Chinna means destroyed again or cut. What is cut? Dvaidha. <laughs> dvaidha means duality, separation. Since they know the nature of peace. How do they know that? They know their nature. <laughs> they know their nature, so they know the nature of peace. They have completed the purpose of their life. The purpose of our life is to go from separation to oneness. They have completed this. And shared in a different way, they have paid off the debts that they were born with. We are all born with five debts. I've shared this in many ways. And the more debts you have, the more separation there is. The more you pay off these debts, the more unity there is. Think of it financially. If you have a huge mortgage, <laughs> your master is the bank. You are the servant. <laughs> but as you pay off that mortgage, you and the bank become more and more and more <laughs> as one, correct? <laughs> and when one has paid off all of their debts, what do they do? Now they can give. So that is shared in the last quarter. Rataha. They are reveling. This is what they are now, what they do. Hita. They care. They have a welfare for Bhuta. Bhuta means beings. Which beings? Not just their family or community or society. Sarva Bhuta, which means all beings, including animals and plants and stones. The one who is independent is the most caring. Please listen to what I'm sharing carefully. Is most caring. How many atmas are there? Show me with your hands. One. If I know my atma, that means I know you, your atma. I love myself the most. Now I love you equally. They become the most caring. And 
they also know their equipment. Since they know the Atma, they know their equipment. And they use their equipment in the best way to help others know their Atma. They know their equipments are dying. All of our equipments are dying. So they work hard and smart to utilize these equipments for others. They don't need it for themselves. And we have to reflect lots on this. When we think of the greatest masters, sometimes we will feel they're too assertive. We'll even call them bossy. But it's because they know the urgency with their equipments are dying, but it's okay, they're free. But that person's equipments are dying and they're trying to help them be free. If your house is on fire, would you calmly say, everyone move out, get a drink before you leave? Correct, it's burning down, get out. I'm going to read to you what Puja Swami Chinmayananda has read, has shared about such a personality. A true prophet is one who lives consumed in an ever-reviving fire of love. He ceaselessly strives to bring out the self from the not-self that is veiling it. In all other forms around and about him, this is indicated by the term engaged in the good of all beings. This loka seva becomes his recreation his self-appointed engagement. His body, mind, and intellect are offered as oblations into the sacred fires of activity. And while remaining at rest within himself, the saint lives on in an unbroken consciousness of the divine, the eternal. From inspiration to application, your application will very much relate to this. Your application yesterday was <laughs> for you to feel the completion of 85 weeks of meaningful mornings and then to reflect on who is most dedicated to you, who is sacrificing the most to you. And if you did reflect on this, you will feel bhagya. You will just feel fortunate. And where does bhagya come from? Bhagavan. Where does grace come from? God. And you ever think to yourself, where is God? Don't be one who's forgetting what you're experiencing. Your application for this morning, how well are you serving society? In this verse, we have a description of one who serves society beyond names and forms. One is awful, 100 is awesome. You analyze how well are you serving society? How well do you live up to this last quarter. Shanti, 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 he. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.